asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Now you heard the news there. Britain has no intention of walking away from the Iran nuclear deal, despite the US pulling out. That's according to the UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson. But don't believe it. Don't believe it. I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll tell you why I think that anyway. Johnson said the UK would strive to preserve the gains made by the international agreement which was signed. Much fanfare when it was signed in 2015. It allegedly curbed Iran's nuclear activities in return for the lifting of sanctions that had been imposed by the US, the EU and the United Nations. Trump said yesterday that is President Trump. Give him his proper name, Richie. President Donald Trump said the deal was defective at its core. Labour, that's the UK Labour Party, said that Trump was reckless, senseless. And Emily Thornberry, the shadow foreign secretary, even called him an idiot. They said it was an act of diplomatic sabotage. Do you want to hear some of what Boris Johnson said today? He's the UK Foreign Secretary. This is Bojo himself. The government regrets the decision of the US administration to withdraw from the deal and to reimpose American sanctions on Iran. We did our utmost to prevent this outcome. From the moment that President Trump's administration took office, we made the case for keeping the JCPOA at every level. Last Sunday, I travelled to Washington and repeated this country's support for the nuclear agreement in meetings with Secretary Pompeo, Vice President Pence, National Security Advisor Bolton and others. And my right honourable friend, Prime Minister, spoke to President Trump last Saturday. The US decision makes no difference to the British assessment that the constraints imposed on Iran's nuclear ambitions by the JCPOA remain vital for our national security and the stability of the Middle East. Britain has no intention of walking away. Instead, we will cooperate with the other parties to ensure that while Iran continues to restrict its nuclear program, then its people will benefit from sanctions relief in accordance with the central bargain of the deal. Boris Johnson today. Now, Yukia Amano heads up the International Atomic Energy Agency. Well, he's the director of the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. So what did he say today? Well, he said, and I quote, Iran is subject to the world's most robust nuclear verification regime under the JCPOA, which is a significant verification gain. As of today, the IAEA can confirm that the nuclear-related commitments are being implemented by Iran. So the UN-backed IAEA said, straight from the horse's mouth there, Iran isn't doing anything wrong. So sanctions on Iran for doing nothing except honouring the deal it agreed to back in 2015. The Iranians have called Donald Trump a nut job, pretty much. They didn't say nut job, but the language they used implied they think he's a bit of a, a screw job. The Speaker of Iran's Parliament, Ali Larajani, took a dim view of Trump's decision, telling the Iranian Assembly that Trump doesn't have the mental capacity to deal with issues. Trump's abandoning of the nuclear deal was a diplomatic show. Iran has no obligation to honour its commitments under the current situation. It is obvious that Trump only understands the language of force. That was Ali Larajani, the Iranian Speaker of Parliament. I wonder, does he bear any similarity in terms of the way he carries himself to John Burko? Probably not. The French and the UK say they disagree with Trump, as you heard. Um, but don't believe that for a minute. Because it's all smoke and mirrors. That's what I think it really is. They've got to give you the impression there's some opposition to it. Right? Where would be the fun? Or how would they convince people that they're not living in this rigged system where these moves are thought out and planned 
years and years and years in advance. How could they convince us of that if they didn't give us just a little bit of opposition? Right? China, Russia and Germany say they remain committed to the deal. Well, it's interesting, Benjamin Netanyahu, whom we might hear from in a minute, we might not, the Israeli Prime Minister, he's in Moscow as we speak, or as I speak to you, meeting with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. I wonder what's going on in terms of that conversation. Now, Fawaz Gerges is a professor of international relations at LSE in London. He says this is about regime change. Trump wants regime change, says Fawaz Gerges. Have a listen. Beyond, beyond all these factors, I think the underlying premise, the underlying premise behind President Trump's decision is regime change uh, in Tehran. President Trump and the people around President Trump believe that they can break the Iranian economy and they can break the backbone of the Islamic Republic in Iran. This is really the underlying premise that we have not heard much about it from President Trump. Mm. Does he have a point though, you know, Saudi uh, and Israel saying that Iran has remained aggressive, it's a destabilizing force in the region? There are two questions here. The first question is, has Iran respected and abided by the terms, by the nuclear deal signed in 2015? The American intelligence services say that Iran has done so. The nuclear watchdog responsible for verification says that the Iranians have respected the deal. The American Secretary of Defense, General Matisse, said that Iran has respected the nuclear deal. So there is the European Union, including the United Kingdom, uh, France and Germany, uh, they all say that Iran has abided by the nuclear deal. It has abided by the deal, of course it has abided by the deal. Right. What's going on then? Well, look, we've, through a thousand shows on this particular programme, through thousands of others that I've been involved in, in the course of the, or during the course of the last dozen years or so. We've outlined through the pages, through transcripts of speeches given by people like Wesley Clark and others, this is all part of a plan. Iran is targeted for the same lunatic asylum reality that is now faced by Libya, that is now faced by Syria, Syrians and Libyans. It's all part of a long-term plan. And don't believe for a second when Bojo and one or two others say that they're really against Trump, because by saying they're against Trump's decision, they're also saying they're against Israel. And, dear listener, we know that Macron and May and Bojo the Clown et al., Trump, of course, get their orders from Tel Aviv, don't they? What do you think Netanyahu is doing in, in, uh, in Moscow today? What do you think he's there to do? What do you think he's there to do? Do you think he's there to, to, to arrive all contrite and all apologetic and all conciliatory to try and smooth over things with Russia? Not at all. Not at all. Interesting, you might have missed it. I won't play it because I don't have time to play the clip. But Netanyahu was on CNN last week when I was away with a presenter called Chris Cuomo who asked him about Israel's own nuclear weapons. And the CNN presenter put it to Netanyahu, how can you talk about disclosure and openness and transparency when you won't acknowledge that you have an arsenal of nuclear weapons? An in I've got the audio, but I want to move on. I want to move on. Time is against me. And I don't want to inflict Netanyahu's voice on you in this first show back after my little break. So Brexit is over then. We've been saying that for, well, for two years, haven't we? Nearly two years. It's all over. It was all over the day we voted to leave. House of Lords, peers, inflicted defeats in four areas yesterday, taking to 14 in total the number of changes that they say will have to be made to the EU withdrawal bill. Right? The bill, like every other bill, must pass through the upper chamber, the House of Lords. So the Lords 
can amend any bill and send it back for another vote in Parliament. Confused? Are you? Don't be confused. It's pretty straightforward, but I was thinking to myself today, dear listener, it's also proof as damn it that you don't live in a democracy. While on the one hand it seems fairly reasonable that any legislation proposed by the government would be subject to legal scrutiny and that any proposed bad legislation could be disposed of by the lords. But the lords are unelected. They're unelected. They are a bunch of rotund, old, farting, burping, sleeping spongers. Bastards, all of them, who collect £300 a day for a good old snooze, a good fart, a good burp, drool on the old shirt and tie there, wake up and go home. That's what they are. They're unelected. They're appointed for several reasons, mostly because they have donated large sums of money to the parties or, in some cases, they have been members of Parliament. But they're unelected and the upper house is filled to the brim with remoners. And they've told Theresa May's government that the UK must remain in the European Economic Area, which of course would mean keeping single market rules and it would mean free movement of people. Peers, as in the House of Lords, they're known as peers, peers, life peers, hereditary peers. They also backed continued participation in EU agencies, namely the Single Market and the Customs Union. What else did they do? Well, they removed the Brexit date of March 29th, 2019. So forget about Article 50. Forget about the idea that when we voted to leave the European Union and seven or eight months later, Theresa May finally triggered Article 50. That was March of last year. That meant then that we had two years to do a deal or leave without, without, without one even. The Lord said, no, you can't leave on March the 29th, 2019. We might have to stay because there might be things unsaid, un, undone. There might be things not agreed upon. Lovely, eh? That's democracy for you. But then we did say after the vote on June 23rd, 2016, that we'd never leave. 20 minutes past the hour, the Nazi granny is on the run. Saw this today, made me laugh. Um, I, I don't think she's um, laughing, but the there's an arrest warrant in Germany for an 89-year-old woman who has been dubbed the Nazi grandma. Why? Well, she was given a two-year prison sentence for inciting the German people to Holocaust denial and after she was handed down the sentence, she was told to show up to jail on a certain day and she decided she wouldn't show up. So she's on the run. She's 89. Her name is Ursula Haverbeck. She was given two years in prison. She, she appealed the original sentence. She was charged with sedition and incitement after publishing several articles denying the Holocaust in a right-wing newspaper called Voices of the Reich. She was supposed to start the prison sentence uh, today, but didn't show up. So everybody's out looking for her, presumably. I wouldn't imagine they are. The International Auschwitz Committee said that it hopes Haverbeck will soon be apprehended and sent to prison. And Christoph Heubner, who's the executive, executive vice president of the International Auschwitz Committee, said, One can only hope that the judiciary and police are urgently looking for her. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, I doubt, I, do you know, somehow, somehow, I don't imagine the German police are scouring the countrysides. I can't imagine they've taken a pair of the old lady's bloomers, given them to a bunch of Valsatians and set them running across the country looking for this old lady. This is madness, isn't it? Isn't it madness? Regardless of what do you think about history, about Germany, about the Holocaust and all of that, surely it shouldn't be illegal to disagree with one aspect of history, let alone any aspect of history. Whether she's right or wrong, what difference does it make? Right? 
surely you should say, or you should be allowed to say, I don't believe this. I don't agree with this. I think this is, this is fake. If she's wrong, expose her, embarrass her, show where she's wrong. But sentencing people to two years in prison and an 89-year-old woman as well. The world is mad. 